Welcome to this drawing date little sketch with me, draw with me video. Yeah, so this was this was a really cool, fun idea that I had seen a couple other YouTubers. Specifically, I was inspired by Chris Hong. She has a channel where she, uh, yeah, she just does like random art stuff, but also she goes to cafes and things sometimes and just draws and it's really nice and really cute. And um, so I wanted to attempt, you know, doing the same thing. So here I'm just kind of finishing up what I was working on on those like loungy seats where I was sitting before the booth. Yeah, I have this like one girl that I just found on Pinterest. I liked her outfit and her vibe. Um, I'll put like the finished drawings on the side here. So this is the finished, uh, the one that my hand is covering right now. And then, yeah, this is the one that I'm working on right now currently. All of the, all of the drawings that I'm doing are from Pinterest. And that's typically what I do um, when I when I sit down to draw, among other things, if you saw my figure drawing uh, sketchbook idea video. Yeah, for this video, all of these are just from Pinterest. Um, my feed is typically populated with a bunch of different interesting references, so I like to pull from that when there's not really people to draw or like the atmosphere where I'm drawing isn't super great for drawing people. Like it would be awkward if I... <laughs> if I was like, you know, trying to look at people in the room. Um, for this cafe, since it is like so spread out and everybody's kind of, you know, doing their own thing. And also there weren't too many people um, in the cafe by the time that I was sitting in the booth. Uh, it would be kind of awkward if I was trying to situate myself so that I could stare at people and draw them. So Pinterest it is. Um, yeah, this section, I'm just building out the kind of uh, general forms and shapes that are going on in the reference photo. I'm just, I'm only using pencil in, in these sketches and with pencil or with, like sometimes I use that blue, uh, blue pilot color, you know, pencil as well. I like to block in major shapes and particularly like looking at like shadow and light in an image if, if the image has like very specific blocks of shadow versus light that usually is a good way to inform like how the structure of the of the shape will form if that makes sense yeah when i'm sketching like especially a body um everything kind of needs to be proportionate to each other you know like if the head is too big or like a limb is too big or the hands are too big or too small it can just kind of throw off the whole thing so me blocking in lightly at the beginning is just very much like, I don't know, <laughs> paying attention to the shapes of the body and the proportion and um, making sure that I don't look too closely in one area. Like when I'm building the shape of the entire body, I try to take a step back often, not, not literally, but like look at the, the entire shape of the body, look at the silhouette, and just try to create a base for myself so that afterwards I can go in and um, put a little more pressure like I'm doing now um, to, you know, define details and add shading and, and do whatever I need to do to finish the drawing. So yeah, just adding in some details here and um, that's pretty much good. Sorry for the upside down <laughs> angle on this one. I did bring my like overhead um, overhead little tripod, it's not a tripod, it's like a thing that you can clip to the side of a table and then it has like a really sturdy kind of wire thing that can, that you can position on, on top of your, over top of whatever you're working on, but that's only for a phone. 
And since I needed my phone to look at my reference, I could only use my vlogging camera and a little tripod thingy. So I was limited in my angles. Same with this one, same with the, the drawing that we're looking at right now. The angle is a little, a little strange, but um, that's why we have the, the finished scan on the side. <laughs> Hopefully that's helpful to see um, the finished piece beside the, the process of me actually making it, especially in this awful angle. Yeah, so moving on to this this next drawing, I'm drawing a model, what is her name? One second, let me look it up. So yeah, the model's name is Sheena Novalinga, and she's Inuit, so that's cool, I didn't know that, because Inuit is primarily Canadian, I believe. But yeah, she's an indigenous, uh, like, influencer, creative, creator, model, whatever. Um, and I saw her, uh, like, little videos of her getting her, like, um, traditional face tattoos and I don't know she's just she's so cool and I like her so I wanted to I, I, I ran into a portrait of her on Pinterest so I decided to draw her um, whenever I draw like super straight-on portraits like this one where like the face needs to be super symmetrical something about it I don't know feels like off for me, not off, but like I feel like I need to put in extra effort. Maybe that's because like I typically draw like three quarter, three quarter view faces, which is such a artist trope. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I I feel like I, I have to put extra pressure on myself because I'm trying to make the face um, mostly symmetrical, or maybe like. I don't know, if one side of the face is off, then it looks very off. One thing about drawing like faces and people and bodies is that like, mm, it needs to be pretty much like spot on for it to look right, you know? Um, I feel like people or like just humans, whatever, you can realize something is off based on like looking at something with things that you see all the time and like humans we see each other all the time you know we see faces we see ourselves in the mirror you know we're we're experts on what a face should look like what a body should look like just like anatomically wise and i feel like maybe that's partially what happens with like uncanny valley stuff where things look almost human but not quite or like if you've ever seen a drawing or done a drawing yourself that you know you you drew a face and like it's technically fine but something's off about it and the face just looks a little weird you know i find that especially with hyper realistic or like realistic style drawings if the face especially or like if the body isn't perfectly representative of what it would look like in real life especially if you're going that super realistic um style route then it it's very obvious that it looks off and it's it's interesting that that exists for specifically humans and faces and bodies um more than it would for like i don't know animals or objects or plants or i don't know you know just things that that we don't um pay as much attention to in day-to-day -day life. So yeah, moving on to another portrait after that last one. This one, obviously, I felt much more comfortable with because we're at three-quarter view now, which is my comfort zone. <laughs> yeah, this one was cool. I picked out this model because I really liked her uh, nose. I really love models with like an interesting nose, you know, like a bit of a bump in it or like a hook or something i don't know something about faces with like interesting features is very fun to draw and very like cool to me one tip for drawing faces kind of similar to to i don't know the way that i was talking about how to draw um figures or like block in those shapes um we all know the like center line eye line kind of guideline kind of uh tactic for for drawing faces but yeah I, I i do like using that it is helpful so like once you have your center line and then you do your eye line i like to do two more little lines for the bottom of the nose and the mouth um just to kind of get that position 
clear on the face before like going in and adding details and features and things like that. But something important about that is that like those three lines, especially if you're doing like a three quarter view or like a face at an angle or something like that, those three lines should always be completely parallel to each other. That's like a way to help the face look right. Um, like the eyes can't be at one angle and then the nose line and the mouth line at another angle. Um, they all should pretty much follow the same direction exactly. And then once I have those lines in, what I like to do for the eyes is just like draw little circles or like ovals where the eyes will kind of line up. Super light because I'm going to be drawing over it with like the actual eyes. Something about that really helps uh, like visualize the, the ratios of the face and things like that. I've heard that um, especially when drawing likenesses or like trying to get somebody's face down on paper, it's very helpful to nail the ratio uh, or like the distance from the bottom of the nose to the outside of the eye to the other side of the eye, like that triangle. Um, and then I guess like the lip falls in under, just like the, the distance between each feature on the face, like the eyes, the nose, the mouth, is like one of the most important parts in drawing somebody's likeness because if you're drawing somebody but maybe their nose is a little too low in your drawing or the eyes are a little too far apart then that's kind of like a surefire way to have the likeness look a little bit off but yeah on to our next little girly sketch um this last one was just a kind of outfit pick i think um, of this girl wearing this like oversized kind of poofy bomber varsity jacket type thing and then some like slimish pants. I love interesting silhouettes in fashion and I love drawing like movement and like folds and things like that and like I was talking about before um, this is kind of my like base sketch thingy that I that I worked out. Um, when I'm sketching I'm doing a lot of like looking back and forth at the reference image and my paper or whatever I'm drawing on, um, especially when I'm building out these like foundational shapes. It's super important that I look back and forth a lot at my reference or my figure. One of the things that um, my teacher in, I think it was first year, we had like some figure drawing classes, shout out Jamie Morris. Um, he always said that like you should be looking at your reference or your figure more than you're looking at your paper. So yeah, I feel like that holds true, especially when you're like building out the base. And then once you feel confident about your proportions and things like that, then you don't have to look at your subject as much. Um, I know that that, could, that that can be hard. Like if you're drawing people in a cafe, it's awkward enough. Um, looking up at them and having to like look back and forth lots. It is a bit of a struggle for sure, but um, yeah, I don't know. Use your best judgment and usually if like people do end up moving from what I was looking at or leaving or it's too awkward to look at them, then I just kind of try and fill in what looks right in my brain. But ideally you do want to be looking at your reference as much as possible while you're drawing. And yeah, I don't know, I'll always be an advocate for like drawing people around you. I feel like especially in like a cafe setting or like somewhere where maybe people won't be sitting for too long or they order their coffee and then they're gone. It just kind of trains you to, you know, learn how to draw quickly and take in as much observation of your, your figure and what you're looking at as fast as possible and then getting it down on paper and I don't know, it's, it's kind of like a cool exercise to, to get better at drawing bodies and learning what they look like and all that fun stuff. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. Um, that's all. That's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you guys in a bit. Also, look at this. Okay, so this was me um, <laughs> going into the building and 
going around the, the little revolving door thingy and seeing the fucking receptionist person inside the building just like watching me do that it was funny anyways okay <laughs> bye